Photop or Photopia is a new app that I've discovered this year uh, that I'm hope is going to work better than Pixlr. So when you look at it initially, if you've ever seen Photoshop, you'll see that it looks very much the same as Photoshop. So this is a really good program to learn how to use uh, because Photoshop is the industry standard for photo editing and drawing. So I'm going to open up a, 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 a file from the computer. I'm just going to choose uh, the same image that I used for the Pixlr one. And we're going to go ahead and load it. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, going to uh, delete the background, and that's the purpose of this. Uh, so uh, I'm going to take the layer, and it doesn't seem to be locked, so, so I, I think, or is it? So we'll find out in a second. So we have different tools. Um, this is our select tool, but the main tool that we're going to be used is called the lasso tool or the magic wand tool. So with the lasso tool, I'm going to hit the lasso select and I can go ahead and draw a picture and using my pen tablet, it's pretty easy and I delete, hit the backspace and it deletes the image. So uh, it, whatever I've selected, I'm going to deselect that by hitting command D. Uh, now I can, I have other ones. I have the polygonal lasso select, which is uh, more dot oriented. So I can just tap and close it off. And I can again, delete uh, that section in there. So that's another one. I'm gonna again, hit command D for deselect. Now this one uh, that Pixlr did not have is called the magnetic lasso select tool. And that is an awesome, Tool. So I'm going to select that one. And this one actually will, if I can get it to work, um, is it not working? Not working. Hmm. Okay, this one. Oh, there we go. It's starting to work. So what it will do is it will actually trace my um, trace my subject fairly well. Uh, it'll be a little bit glitchy here and there. So you want to tap um, as you go around to try and tell it. Basically, it's going to do choose the color. Um, the color differences. And when there's not that many color differences, it won't work as well. Um, so it, uh, it works not too badly, uh, especially when the color differences are really distinct. Uh, then I'll go ahead and so it, then it will work quite well. And it's nice around things like hair um, and going so for our purposes I think this is going to actually work really well coming back to the beginning and now I get the marching ants um, so I can refine the edge uh, so you want to play with that a little bit um, I'll tap refine edge and this is going to show me what it looks like if I delete everything which is pretty good I can adjust the border and make it um, let's see what happens when I bring it way up. That's what I find is best is by experimenting sort of where I'm at. So that, that gives me this really fat border around, uh, which over here will show you that it kind of get, makes it a little sloppy. So I don't like that too much. We'll go back down here to a, a, a more precise border and that's pretty good. So I'm going to I'm going to go with that and I'm going to say OK up here in the right hand corner. And and there I have it. So now I have a clear layer that uh, with it with no background. Now I'm going to put another background in it. So down here in the lower left hand or lower right hand corner, there is new layer. So I'm going to tap on that and I'm going to drag it behind my new layer. So think of this as layers of paper. And I'm going to, so while this is selected, so it's dark, I'm going to go ahead and color it another color. So what I'm looking for is a paint bucket 
tool and I need to figure out where that is. So if you're not sure, what you'll want to do is just kind of hover over and look for, uh, there, there it is, Paint Bucket Tool. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to give it a color. So I'm going to tap red and I'm going to uh, here and I'm going to say OK. And now with my Paint Bucket selected, I should be able to paint the background red. And there you go. So that one is way easier to use than Pixlr. Um, I'm going to show you another method. So I'm going to I'm going to make those disappear, and I'm going to make this one appear. I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to drag it down so that you can see uh, what that looks like. And where is it? It's right here. I'm going to bring that to the top. Okay. So now we have the magic wand tool, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to click on the magic wand, and when I when I do that, um, it will select everything um, in a certain color range, uh, and then I can I can uh, increase the tolerance of that. So I can increase it to say 20, and when I tap on here, there'll be more more selected and then I can just hit my backspace and it should delete it. It's thinking, I think. Oh, I need to get rid of this layer. And I can just keep doing that and keep selecting parts of it. Uh, so I can do that. It 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 doesn't work as well because I'm gonna get lots of little bits left in here. Um, if I deselect contiguous, um, it's going to select everything that's the same color, and that's not good because you can see I've selected parts of its face. Um, so I think for the purposes of, of our assignment, using the lasso magnetic tool will be better. Um, if you want to tweak something, though, uh, you can um, hit the um, erase button, and then you can just erase and follow along closely with the erase button. So that's another option that you can do using Pixlr. And of course, um, if you want to save it, um, save the layers that you want. So if you want to save just this layer, or if you want to save those two, make sure that the, the eyes are turned on to whatever layers you want, so that what you see is what you're going to save. Go to File and Export as JPEG if you want the whole thing uh, um, done or if you have a transparent bit um, PNG. And uh, so go JPEG and you can go ahead and save that and um, it's all good. So hopefully that works.